Day to day, Carl Rove begins our coverage, and Carl, good morning to you down there in Austin, Texas. Rob Portman, a Republican from Ohio, maybe one of the more conservative, but a moderate senator, works with the other side all the time. His statement yesterday, a president who's no longer in public office cannot be removed from that office, regardless of how inappropriate we may deem their contact. So he's a no. So in the end, if there's acquittal, what are we accomplishing this week, do you think, Carl? Well, remember, this is taking place in two different dimensions. We have the legal dimension where the question is, is this uh, impeachment constitutional? And if it is constitutional, does the, uh, does the president's uh, actions meet the legal test of incitement of insurrection, which are technical legal terms? But we also have a second uh, dimension in which this is taking place, which is the court of public opinion. And in that court of public opinion, the question is, did the president do the wrong thing on June, January 6th? And had he done the wrong things in the moments leading up to that and in the aftermath of the attack on the Capitol? And uh, these two things are separate. And we could very well, and I suspect we will see, an acquittal of the president uh, in the first dimension, the legal dimension. But this was very damning footage that was seen yesterday and, and, and a very damning time frame laid out for the lack of action on the part of the president, who is not uh, stepping up and saying, uh, stop, leave, I condemn the violence. Uh, and, and, and not for 24 hours. It, it does he can finally condemn the violence or 27 hours uh, after the violence began? The images obviously are powerful, and they were uh, never seen before, some, right. of the, some of those images. Um, and of course, we know that throughout uh, political history, right? You make uh, impressions by vi images and certainly video. Listen to David Schoen. This is uh, President Trump's lawyer. He was on Laura Ingram last night talking about that. They're clearly, you know, playing uh, to the cameras, uh, to the public all of the time. But the riot happened. It was horrific and so on. And I said, you talk about unity and healing, showing that tape over and over again, the same slides and so on, and manipulated by them, does nothing for healing. It's the exact opposite. It's continuing to open wounds uh, for the American uh, public. Carl, what do you make of his argument? Well, I, I think it's it, to some degree accurate. Look, this is a political endeavor, and, and as well as a constitutional endeavor, and, and you've got to you've got to think that the country would be better off if we weren't going through this. But we are going through it, and it, I believe at the end there's going to not be 67 votes to condemn, find the president guilty, and condemn him. But look, they're, they're focus group testing the, these uh, the, each days, the people's reaction to each days have, when they put that video up. They're having focus groups. How are you reacting? They may actually be. Focus, they may have focus group tested it even before they showed it. So it's a complete, it's a very political uh, effort, no doubt about it. But it will have an effect, in my, in my opinion. There's no doubt about it that this has focused the attention of the American people. It's going to have a primary effect on Donald J. Trump, President Trump, but it's going to have a secondary impact upon the Republicans. And I have no doubt we're likely to see if there is acquittal. Uh, any Republican who's up for an election in 2022 in a tough district or a tough state is likely to see. Uh, the, the, this material used against them. No ifs, ands, or buts. Speaking of 2022, you write today in the Wall Street Journal, the hubris of Joe Biden on COVID relief, as in 2009, jamming big spending through may cost Democrats in the next midterms. Explain that, Carl. Well, two things. One is I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm intrigued by the difference between the rhetoric, we want bipartisanship, I want to work together, his inaugural address where he had this very, you know, my whole soul is in this, uh, bringing the country together, and, and how they're pr approaching COVID relief, which is, we don't care what the Republicans make in the way of suggestions. We're not going to try and find any way to, to bring unity. We're going to jam this thing down their throats, just like we did with the stimulus bill. And then we're going to go out and boast to political to Politico reporters that this is going to be a gigantic political advantage for us, a, quote, battering ram in 2022 against Republicans who are willing to, quote, cut taxes for the wealthy but not help anybody mm -hmm. during a pandemic. That, 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 there's, a, there's a big, uh, you but know, Carl, problem between those two. do they have the politics right? That's I'm wondering. You know, the CBS no, no, poll yesterday no. said 83 percent approve of the COVID relief package so far. So maybe the Democrats are thinking, we'll just push this through and the people will, will uh, reward us in the end. They're wrong? Maybe, maybe, but, but I think that's wrong. Uh, ABC poll this week, 49% said we support the, the, the big expensive package being pushed by 
uh, the Democrats on a straight party line vote, 49 percent. Forty percent said we would want a less expensive package with Republican support. Ten percent said don't think we need a COVID relief package at all. So that's a pretty evenly split between those that want the big package and those that don't. On February 11th, 2009, the Gallup poll found that 59 percent of the American people supported the $800 billion stimulus relief bill uh, that uh, Barack Obama and Joe Biden were pushing. And we know how that all turned sure. out. Fair enough. Uh, the Republicans won 63 House seats and six Senate seats the following year. It was far more po uh, popular then o Obama than this Care package was, is yeah, now. Obamacare was in that mix, too, back then in that year. Quickly. Oh, yeah. And we're going to have other big spending things coming up. No, but no, yeah, to, don't don't think this is the last big spending bill. I get bill. it. On screen here, Democratic priorities, $15 minimum wage. That's small business, right? Uh, $50 million in environmental justice, whatever that is. And and five billion for homeless funding. And Carl, you can go down the list. It's billions here and billions there and billions here and billions there. And the American people decide whether or not those expenses have been justified. Last comment. We got a roll. It, it adds up to trillions, and that's going to be the issue, I think. Uh, all this money going to blue states and blue constituencies for no good purpose or little good purpose or not enough good purpose, it's going to be a problem for the Democrats if in it's going to, If it's going to trillions, you're going to need a bigger whiteboard, Carl. <laughs> it's a lot of zeros. Thank or you so much. turn it sideways. <laughs> turn it you? sideways. Okay. Thank you.